Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So before we get into the free head tracking software, I just wanted to give a big thanks to all of the supporters of the channel and all of you who've subscribed. Um, it really does help out the channel a lot and uh, I really hope that you guys enjoy what I'm putting out. So without any further ado, let's get into the free head tracking software. So to get started, you're going to need three things. The first thing is going to be an application called AI Track, which is free. The second one is going to be another small application called Open Track, which is also free. And both these programs, I'm going to have links for them down in the description. And the third thing you're going to need is obviously a web camera. Um, and I think any web camera works as long as you know it can see your face and uh, track it. It should work. Um, for this specific video, I have a Logitech webcam and uh, I've been using this and it's been working really well. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to download the two small free applications from my description. And once you have those downloaded, they come up as zip files. And you're going to unzip those files and you're going to place the content that's in those zip files in a specific location of your choice. Now for me, I've uh, put them into my flight simulator folder and I created another folder in there called tracking. So I'll show you what mine looks like. So here is my flight simulator 2020 folder and I created a tracking folder. And then all I did was I copied the two folders in the two zips and I pasted them in here. So once you're done this, now we can open up these two applications and uh, we can configure them and make them work. So let's move on to how to set these up. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is let's look at the AI track. And when you open up this folder, you'll see there's a bunch of content in here. We only really care about this AI track.exe file. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna double click on this one and then you're gonna get this window that's gonna open. We're gonna leave this for now. Okay, so now let's look at the open track. So I'm gonna click on the second folder. And again, there's a bunch of content. We're only really concerned about the open track.exe. So you're gonna double click on this and it's gonna open up this window. So I can close this one for now. And now we're gonna work with these two programs here and uh, we're gonna get this to track your face. So one thing important to note, I hope you guys already have your webcams plugged into the computer and um, that the webcams are functioning and working. So let's move on to how to configure these two applications. All right, so right now we're in the Cessna 172 in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And uh, with these two applications, let's start off with the AI track um, this is a very simple, small program. Uh, right now, it doesn't show any video. And you don't really have very many options on this, but we're gonna click on the configuration uh, window here at the bottom. You're gonna click on this and you're gonna get this window. The only thing you need to do here is you need to make sure that there's a check mark here where it says use remote open track client. And then if these two boxes are empty, you're going to type in these numbers. So 127.0.0.1 for the IP. And then you're going to type in 4242 in the port. That's all you have to do. Now you're going to click apply. And you see nothing happens. Um, th this does save this information. So you, once you've clicked applied, now just click the X and it'll close this window. And obviously if you go back into configuration, you'll see that it's still here. So this part is configured, it's complete. So now let's look at the open track. So in the open track, um, this one here has a couple of things that you need to change. So the first thing is under input, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it says UDP over network. I think when you first install it, I think it said point tracker 1.1. Uh, but all you gotta do, like I just did, is click this little down arrow and you'll have a whole bunch of options here. You're just gonna go to the UDP over network. The second thing you wanna do where the little hammer is on the right hand side, you're gonna click on this. And then you're just gonna make sure that 
under port, you type in 4242. And this port needs to match the port under the configuration window for AI track. Okay. Now, once you've done this, you put 4242, you're going to click OK. And now we're just going to move our way down. So for the output, you want to make sure that you have free track 2.0 enhanced. You do not need to configure anything in here. You just need to make sure this is uh, the output source. For the filter, you're going to leave this uh, ACCELA. You're going to leave that. And that's it for this part of the configuration. So on the right hand side, um, here, it's already going to have a default profile. We're not going to use that one. We're going to create a new one just so I can show you guys how to customize this. So what you want to do is you're going to click on profile and let's just create a new one. So I'm going to create a new empty configuration file and I'm going to type in test. Click OK. And now I have a new configuration file. So a couple of things that you want to make sure you do here is we're going to open the options. Okay, you do not need to do anything under the shortcuts, but we do want to look at the output. So the top portion here of the output, uh, we're just going to make sure they match. So the yaw, the source is yaw, pitch, the source is pitch, roll, the source is roll, X is X, Y is Y, and Z is Z. Okay, so once you've confirmed that the destination matches the source, um, for me, I prefer to disable the roll. I don't really like it. That's when you tilt your head left and right. Um, so I'm going to disable this. And then there's two options here that you want to invert. The first one is going to be the pitch. So you're going to make sure there's a check mark in this box. And the other one is going to be the last one. So Z. You're going to put a check mark here. And for the relative translation and the game detection, we're going to leave those. Don't touch them. The only thing we were worried about was the top portion of the output. So once you've done these, you're going to click OK. And that's pretty much it for the configuration of the two files. Fairly easy, straightforward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start the tracking. And once we start the tracking, we're going to see the mapping and see how it relates on the grid lines. And we're going to uh, try and make them as smooth as possible so that we have a good, enjoyable flying experience. OK, so just before we open the AI track, just make sure, um, because I just noticed that once we created a new profile, it automatically converted the input back to the point tracker 1.1. Again, this should be the UDP over network. So it should look like this. The free track 2.0 enhance is correct and the ACC ELA is also correct. And we can also just validate one more time before we move on that the port is 4242. So that's all set up and good. So now let's move on to the AI track, open the start tracking. And what this should do is should open up your webcam and now you're able to see your face and you're going to see it with a bunch of like uh, little dots and all that's doing is just tracking your face in a three dimensional space. So if I move right, left, forward, backward, you'll see that it just maintains and keeps track of my, my facial movements. So now to do the mapping, what we're going to do is we're going to start the open track so you're just going to click on start here and now it says no movement which is or no video I'm sorry which is normal and you're going to see that little octopus so little octopus now reacts and moves according to your head's movements but you can see that it's extremely sensitive if I move it's just going all over the place it's not really very smooth at least not for me I don't really like it like this so we're going to kind of try and make this more natural as possible so the way to do that is we want to click on mapping and mapping is going to open up this window here which has your yaw, pitch, roll, x, y, and z axes. So what we're going to do here, um, I wish I could kind of move these around where you guys can still see the screen fairly good. I'll try moving it up here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to move these while we have this open so that we can see how it changes. So for me, let's look at the yaw first. So the yaw is going to control left and right head movement when you wrote, when you move your head left and right. But you can see it's kind of all over the place. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to want to click on this red line once and you get like this little dot, this little gray dot. 
So you can make a couple of these points depending on how you want the, uh, the head movement to move. But for me, what I find is it's easier to make this little uh, gray dot and then move it down to the bottom at 10. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make another dot closer to the 180 or right at 180. And this one you're going to move it all the way up so it looks like this. And the reason I've done this is because if you see my head movement now, I still have a little bit of leniency left and right before it actually rotates my head. So if I go past that 10, now you see that it will move my head in the game left and right. So it's still not perfect. We're going to adjust this a little bit more. Um, what I like to do here is you're going to create one more dot kind of halfway through. And now this dot is going to tell the program whereabouts you want it to move and how quickly. So for me, what I found was the best setting was to move this to about 60. And what this does, when I turn my head left or right, you see there's a little bit of leniency and give. It's not going to move if I shake my head a little bit. But as soon as I start to rotate, it's going to move my head very quickly. So that I don't have to move my head too far and lose visuals of my screen. So, you know, with a slight movement to the right, I'm able to look almost all the way behind me and I can still see my screen. Okay, so that's good for the yaw. Now let's look at the pitch. So the pitch, the same thing. I'm going to create one dot here and this dot, I'm going to put it down at 10. I'm going to put one at the end and I'm going to drag this one all the way up to 90. So I have that linear line. And then again, I'm going to make a curve and the curve for this one, I usually use 30 and I'll tell you why. So this is going to be your up and down movement. So your pitch. The reason why I use 30 and not 20 is because of the looking up portion. The game is not perfect, so when you start to look up, it kind of, you know, gets glitchy and kind of does that, which I don't like, but we can't turn off the upwards movement. Um, but if I look down, it's enough that I don't have to really, you know, force myself too much. I can still see the screen and everything looks good. So I think 30 is a fairly good spot to leave that. Um, so let's move on to the roll. Now the roll, again, I can put a dot here. It's not really going to make a difference. And I can put the linear line in case later on I want to use it. But right now, if you remember, in the options, we had the roll disabled. So that's why it makes no difference or no changes when I have this axis uh, configured in this manner. So I'm going to leave the roll as is. And now let's move on to the X, Y, and Z. So for these three, I'm just going to keep these simple. I'm not going to make uh, too much changes here. I'm just going to add one point and I want to bring this down to one and then one point at the end and bring this all the way up to max. So again, this just gives you that little bit of leniency so it's not so hard when you're turning and moving. I'm going to do that same thing for Y. So again, one and one at the end. Okay, and one more for the Z. So at the bottom and one more at the top. Okay. Then you're going to click OK. And this is pretty much it for me. Like I like these settings. That's all you really have to do to configure. So again, now if I look right, I can see the wing. If I look, sorry, that was my left. If I look to my right, now I can look to the wing. I don't have to move too much, but I can also tilt my head just a little bit more and I can almost see behind me. Um, now the other axis that we've configured, it allows me to move upwards and look actually over the hood. I can actually look down towards the seat and my brakes. And if I can't read the displays or if I want to get in close, I can actually just move for forward and I'm able to see everything on the screens. Now this also works if I move laterally towards the right or towards the left. Okay. And I think like that little give in the center there where we put everything to that one or 10, you can see that if I shake my head a little bit here, it's not moving the camera, which is great because that's more natural. Now, if I go past that point, it automatically does it. And again, just to show proof, I'm not moving the mouse. Here's my hands and there's my head to the right. There's my head to the left. There's my head. If I look down, if I want to move over, 
and if I want to just get in close and look at the instruments or the displays. And that's all free without using my hands. Now we can just take a quick little flight and uh, let's see what it looks like with the AI tracking on. Okay, so just for the purpose of the demonstration of the flight, I'm going to move out the open track into another window and uh, we can leave the AI track on just so you can see how my face reacts. And let's just do a quick little flight. And again, those curvatures that we were working on before, um, you guys can set them up any way that you would like. If you wanted to have a little bit more leniency, if you wanted to give it more freedom, um, if you wanted to start turning at specific points, you can do so. So it's very customizable. Um, it's all just based off of your preference, whatever you prefer. And um, that's it. Go. That's it guys. And even for taxiing too, this actually does help out quite a bit. Because you can see where your uh, taxiways are, where you're going, if there's people around you. So I hope this helped you guys. And uh, it wasn't too hard to install and configure. And hopefully this will add a little bit more to your existing experience of the flight sim or car racing or any kind of games that you guys play like that. And if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And as always, I hope you guys subscribe to the channel and leave a like because that obviously helps. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.